Welcome back to part two of our video series on meniscus tears. In this video, we're gonna be comparing physical therapy versus surgery for meniscus tears. We wanna know whether or not you can avoid surgery by doing a rehab program. And to know that, to understand if that's gonna help you and be your best option, we need to dive a little bit deeper into understanding what are the different types of meniscus surgeries and what are the different types of meniscus tears. So briefly, I'm gonna be talking about the differences between a partial meniscectomy and a meniscus repair. We're gonna be talking about the differences between a degenerative meniscus tear and a traumatic meniscus tear because there are some differences and those will be important factors in whether or not you pursue a surgery. Now, the information in this video it's general information. If you have a specific question, then you need to go talk to your medical doctor because they need to evaluate your knee. They might order imaging like an x-ray or an MRI, and you might consult with a physical therapist as well and pursue a rehab program. That is the typical process. But if you are still having pain in your knee, then we also offer some additional options for you, which I'll talk about at the end of the video. So let's go ahead and get started. One surgery that's performed for meniscus tears is a meniscus repair. This type of surgery involves suturing the torn piece of the meniscus. So if there's a traumatic tear in the meniscus and there's a flap and a piece that is torn, the surgeon will suture that together and stitch it up and leave it in the knee to heal. Now this particular surgery can be done when there's tears on the outer portion of the meniscus because you need to have good blood supply in that area for it to heal. And if it's not in that outer, outer region of the meniscus, then you likely need to cut out that meniscus, that torn uh, area, because it's, it's not going to heal. And that's known as a meniscectomy. So a partial meniscectomy means that they are removing a portion of the meniscus that is torn. So let's say for example, you have a lateral meniscus tear. You have a tear on the outside of your meniscus, you have pain on the outside of your knee, and you experience catching, clicking, locking, and it doesn't get better with rehab, it doesn't get better with exercise, it gets worse, you have a loss of motion in the joint, and your best option is to get a partial meniscectomy. Well, the surgeon is gonna go ahead and they're gonna cut out that torn uh, flap or uh, tear in that meniscus, and then you will initiate rehab afterwards. Now the rehab after for those two surgeries are different. If you go with a, a meniscectomy, you can often bear weight on the knee right away and there's less precautions after that surgery because you don't have to, you don't have to be worried about the amount of pressure that you're putting into that joint. Now if you have a meniscus repair, then there's sutures in that joint and so you don't wanna be putting a lot of weight and compressing the joint surfaces and decreasing its potential to heal. So oftentimes, after a meniscus repair, you will be on crutches and you might have no, uh, you may not be able to put any weight on the knee or you might have partial weight bearing onto the knee. So you wanna make sure for either one of those surgeries that you're following your post-op guidelines, which will be given to you by your surgeon. The manner in which you tore your meniscus also plays a role in whether or not you're gonna get surgery and whether your surgeon is gonna suggest a meniscus repair or a partial meniscectomy. And these two factors deter, uh, are dependent on whether it's a degenerative meniscus tear or a traumatic tear. So if you have a traumatic tear, I was describing that earlier. If you uh, twisted your knee, you step wrong off a curb, maybe you're playing soccer and you tore your meniscus, that's a traumatic tear. It is from a, a one-time episode. You can remember the specific incident in which it occurred. A traumatic uh, meniscus tear might need to have a meniscus repair to correct it. This is especially true in those who are younger, especially if you are active. Now there was a study that looked at comparing physical therapy versus a surgery for people that were over 45 years old that had degenerative meniscus tears. That is different than a traumatic tear. If you have a degenerative meniscus tear, that means that your meniscus 
has broken down over time because of repeated stress. And that is what has led to the tear. So that is a little bit different than a traumatic tear. It usually happens in people who are uh, over 45 years old or older. And if that is the case, then research suggests that physical therapy is a better option. It's actually not recommended to do surgery for those degenerative meniscus tears for people that are over 45 years old. Now, if you are younger than 45 years old and you have a degenerative tear, then that's why it's gonna be important to discuss these different options with your surgeon and with your physical therapist. In one of my other videos, I talked about how physical therapy can help you potentially avoid surgery for meniscus tears. But how do you know that physical therapy is going to be your best option? So hopefully right now I could paint a better picture for you of some different scenarios in which physical therapy can be applied to your meniscus tear. So I'm trying to think right now of different situations or scenarios working with patients and clients in which physical therapy was not recommended. And I have a hard time thinking of an example because in almost all cases, physical therapy is recommended for meniscus tears. Even if you are planning on getting surgery, uh, in the past, surgeons were more quick to jump into surgery and repair or cut out the meniscus. But now, research shows that somebody can have a better prognosis with certain surgeries like ACL surgeries or meniscus surgeries if you restore knee range of motion and mobility before the surgery. So there's no immediate rush to jump into surgery. Now, if you're an athlete and you need to get back to playing sports and you're in the middle of the season, then it's understandable that you can get surgery right away. But for most people, and if you're not planning on getting back uh, to sports, you might as well take your time with rehab and restore that knee motion and strength prior to your surgery. Let's apply physical therapy to a traumatic meniscus tear. Let's say you tore the meniscus, you're in a lot of pain, and you can't even move your knee. You have limited range of motion. At this time, if you still have pain after a week of just moving your knee, then you need to see your doctor and you might get diagnosed with a meniscus tear from your MRI. So if the doctor suspects that you have a meniscus tear, they're often going to recommend that you get either an x-ray or an MRI. Usually they do the x-ray first, unless there's very clear indication that you have a meniscus tear. And if you do have a meniscus tear, then physical therapy is gonna be your next option. So they're not gonna usually jump into surgery right away for the reasons I explained before. So you're gonna spend a few weeks or months trying to get as much range of motion back as possible. And another example would be having the degenerative meniscus tear in which you just have breakdown of the meniscus. You're not really sure why you're starting to get knee pain. Your knee is starting to click. Uh, it's locking up on you and you get an MRI and it is confirmed that you do have a meniscus tear, but you're not looking to get surgery. In this situation, in physical therapy is a great option for you. Now you can pursue a formal physical therapy plan. You can go through your insurance, you can get referred to a physical therapist, and you can go through uh, anywhere from one visit to probably 12 physical therapy visits to, to rehab from this knee injury. So your primary goals are gonna be restoring joint motion in the knee, it's gonna be reducing pain, uh, getting rid of some of that clicking and popping and locking, which may or may not fully resolve, but as long as you can get pain-free or mostly pain-free and restore as much function as possible, those are the main goals. That's gonna be the goal of your physical therapist. I'm sure you would uh, like to have less pain and uh, be able to do more activities. It's very possible that right now you have been through everything that I have described. You visited your doctor, it's been confirmed that you have a tear in your meniscus, you tried physical therapy, you mostly got better, but you still continue to have limitation in your knee. You're not able to play soccer the way that you once were. When you're out playing tennis, you're still feeling pain in your knee. So I understand that you wanna get full function back. I know you wanna be pain free. I know that you wanna be able to feel unrestricted with all sports and all activities. And I want that for you as well. So I encourage you to be patient with the process. And I also want to share with you that we do offer 
physical therapy through online consultations. If you live in California, at least right now, we are offering physical therapy online for those of you who live in California. We are able to do a remote consultation. I can look at your knee range of motion through video. We can assess if there's any limitation in your joint motion and we can understand what exercises or stretches are likely to help you the most. Because the thing that's really important about rehabbing from a meniscus tear is that we need to load the knee properly. And by loading, we're talking about resistance with exercises, we're talking about the use of your body weight by doing different exercises like squats and lunges, single leg squats and step ups. These are the types of exercises that mimic the activities that you do in your daily life. And they're very similar and essential movements when you play sports as well. So when you are rehabbing from a meniscus tear, your ultimate goal is to learn how to do all these exercises without pain. So we have to pay attention to how your knee responds to these particular exercises. For example, during one week, you might do fine. Maybe the second week, you do great. But then you get to that third week and you start feeling pain in the knee and you don't know why yet. So a consultation is gonna help you decide or help you determine what types of activities or movements might have triggered that pain. And if we can detect that at that moment, then we can avoid your flare-ups and we can help you recover and move on um, and progress your program effectively so that way you can start to do all those activities again. You may have doubts about whether or not an online physical therapy approach can help you. A lot has changed in the rehab world. We're learning now that strength training and properly prescribing exercise programs are some of the most effective approaches to recover from injuries. And that can be done online through re remote consultations, through an analysis of your movement on video, and we can get a really great idea of what types of exercises you need and your body will adapt to these exercises over time and we can monitor your response to those exercises so that way you can ultimately reach your goal. Now, if you're feeling resistant to it, that's okay. Because it's such a new idea, a lot of people feel uh, intimidated with the idea and you feel resistant to it. Think about Elon Musk when he came out with the electric car and self-driving vehicles. People were resistant to that idea and now you're seeing self-driving cars on the road and it still isn't even implemented as much as he plans to have it in the next 10 years. So in the same way, physical therapy and medicine is going to be delivered through telecommunications. We're gonna be doing this online through different video conferencing calls, platforms like Skype, um, where you can consult with a doctor or a physical therapist to um, get advice and a plan to recover from injuries. So if this is something that interests you and you wanna try this new approach to physical therapy, then head over to our website, evercorelife.com to learn more about us and what we do. And if you do not wanna take action on one of our rehab programs, then I hope that this video has helped you make better decisions to recover from meniscus tears. Because I understand that you wanna stay active and fit for as long as possible, and being able to function pain-free is gonna allow you to live a healthy life, it's gonna allow you to be more fit, so you can uh, just enjoy the activities that you like to spend your time doing, so you can spend time with your friends, playing sports, going on hikes, whatever it is that you like to do, uh, I hope that you can continue to do those things. So if you guys like this video and you want more content like this, then like the video, uh, watch some of my other videos. I'm gonna post some additional content and videos at the end of this one, so make sure to check those out. Uh, bookmark our website for future reference uh, because I'm gonna be continuing to put out more articles and videos that can help you recover from injuries, it can help you uh, live with less pain, so that way you can have a better quality of life. So thank you for watching this video. Good luck with your meniscus tear rehab.